The first 2022 Formula One car has broken cover. Although the images that have been released of the Haas VF22 are computer renderings, they do show the genuine design of the car, or at least as much of it as Haas wants us to see. So this was more than just the launch of the livery. This gives us the first look at a genuine car built to the dramatically changed 2022 technical regulations, which are designed to improve the quality of the racing on track. But it's also a car that could play a decisive role in the long-term future of Haas by turning it into a midfield contender after spending the past two years in the competitive wilderness and effectively giving up on 2021 to focus all of its resources on this new car. The Haas images aren't the definitive car that will take to the track for the first pre-season test in Barcelona on February 23rd but they are the car as it was at a recent point in the design process, so although Haas is keeping a few secrets, there's plenty to be learned from it. With the help of observations from the race's technical editor Gary Anderson and our technical illustrator Rosario Giuliana, let's take a closer look. The front wing features the maximum four elements permitted by the regulations. It has the simplified end plate with the slot gaps continuing around the lower outer corner as part of rules designed to prevent outwash aero. The front suspension is a pushrod design, which is a surprise given Ferrari is expected to have a pullrod design, and Haas takes as many parts as it can from its technical partner, including the suspension. The pushrod goes directly to the outer end of the wishbone, meaning the pushrod angle is very low and leading to high loads in the suspension components. But if you look at the image of the front suspension closely, you will see that where the pushrod meets the chassis, it's not blended in like the other suspension members. Could it be? that Haas is hiding the real design for Ferrari, and it perhaps will have a pull rod configuration after all? We'll find out when we get to the first test. The radiator inlets and underfloor leading edge are now much simpler, as the multi-element barge boards are gone. Haas still retains some small turning vanes, but these are minuscule compared to what we've seen in the past. The underfloor inlet is much higher than in the past, as are the radiator inlet ducts. They're also quite small, but to compensate for that, they're in a very clean area for airflow. The side pods are also dramatically swept back behind the widest point, which is defined by the mandatory side impact crash cones. The show car released by F1 last year was much bulkier in the Coke bottle area, but the Haas is more similar in shape to a 2021 car. As with the previous generation of cars, the aim is still to accelerate the airflow towards the rear of the car for maximum aero benefit. The rear bodywork is quite compact around the gearbox, so again not as large a radiator exit as we've seen in the past. This gives more room between the sides of the bodywork and the inside of the rear wheel, and will allow more high-speed airflow through this area and over the top of the diffuser's upper surface. This should improve the performance of the diffuser. At the rear, Haas has retained the pull rod rear suspension design, but again, it's possible it could be hiding some detail here. The rear wing, like the front wing, is as defined by the regulations. All of the surfaces blend together to reduce the vortices and the turbulence interfering with the following car. The DRS is also conspicuous by its absence, but as it remains in the rules, it will be on the real car. Haas will also benefit from the 2022 specification Ferrari engine. That means it will get the hybrid upgrade introduced by the works team in the final third of last season, but it will also benefit from the big step hoped for from the aggressive design improvements for this year that include changes in the combustion system. It also means the whole power unit package should be a little more compact. As this is the first 2022 F1 car, how does it compare to the show car unveiled at Silverstone last year? Well, it's structurally similar, but there are some key differences. The front wing shape, for example, differs with a far more aggressive sweep, particularly where it drops down towards the nose. The detail at the front of the Venturi's at the leading edge of the floor are also narrower, and with a more aggressive shape, but with fewer elements, although of course it's likely hiding the real design. The nose is also a lot narrower than the wider version we saw last year, the first time Haas has switched to a narrow nose concept. This is because, even with these new regulations, teams still want to maximise the airflow to the front of the floor, as we saw during the previous rule cycle. The basic structure of the Haas team that produced this car is the same as it has always been. 
It relies on its technical partnership with Ferrari for the supply of transferable parts and produces the listed components a team must design itself and own the intellectual property of with the help of Dallara. The race engineering side is handled from its UK base in Banbury, but within that structure things have changed dramatically, meaning the 2022 car is the first Haas that has been designed in-house. That's because what has changed is that Haas now does its own aerodynamic design work. This is undertaken at its recently built base on Ferrari's Maranello site under the technical leadership of Simone Resta. Dallara's contribution is now largely in providing production expertise and other facilities from its Verano headquarters in Italy. Resta joined as technical director at the start of last year. He's one of a number of Ferrari-employed personnel who were effectively seconded to the team. This is a result of the cost-cap regulations, meaning Ferrari needed to redeploy excess staff, although the work they do is solely for Haas, as required by the regulations. Haas always planned to expand to have its own design group, and always had an aero team of some sort, but Ferrari's need to restructure to meet the demands of the cost cap created the opportunity to do this more quickly than might otherwise have been possible. Resta and his design team spent last year focused not only on the 2022 car, but also on making this new group of people work together and fine-tuning the working practices. The Haas VF22 is the first test of the success of that whole process. This is a crucial season for Haas. Although it signed up for F1's latest Concord agreement that runs to the end of 2025, allaying fears team owner Gene Haas might pull out amid concerns about the cost-benefit ratio of F1, its long-term future remains the subject of rumour and speculation. Haas has struggled for the past three seasons. It had the fourth fastest car and finished fifth in the Constructors' Championship in 2018, but slumped the following season. This was the result of aerodynamic stall problems that it took a long time to diagnose, which contributed to its aggressive tyre use. Haas fixed that problem with its 2020 car, but after pre-season testing, the COVID-19 pandemic changed everything. Haas had an upgrade package already designed, but never manufactured it because it froze development and minimised spending amid financial uncertainty. It then made the pragmatic decision to do the bare minimum of work on its carryover car for 2021. While the trackside team did everything it could to get the best out of the car, Haas effectively sacrificed the possibility of a small improvement in 21 to maximise its chances of a big step forward this year. That meant a pointless season in 2021 with a best finish of 12th place. But the focus was on allowing rookie pairing Mick Schumacher and Nikita Mazepin, who remain with the team this year, to acclimatise to F1 and sharpen their skills ahead of what's hoped to be a stronger season this year. And there's every reason to expect that Haas can be back in the points this year. During its first three years in F1, it punched above its weight, and there are clear reasons for its struggles since early 2019. But this year, there are no such excuses. <laughs>